Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob with the Campbell Chronicles and if you're new here, here we discuss all things family, travel, and Disney. So if any of those are of value to you, we definitely recommend subscribing so you don't miss out on any of our content to come. One of my favorite forms of vacation is gotta be the Disney Cruise Line. And I mean, honestly, it really, really is. The relaxation that you get, the service that you experience, the quality entertainment that you get, it all plays to be one of my favorite forms of vacation. One thing that really adds to that, I mentioned relaxation, is visiting a little island in the Bahamas called Castaway Key. A lot of times when I discuss my itineraries with people and discuss Castaway Key, they're like, what's Castaway Key? And I go into this whole thing, well, I thought I would do a little video on that. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and let us know what you think. Have you been to Castaway Key? Is it something that you want to do or is it something you're going to maybe not do because you're not going to do a Disney cruise? I would love to hear from you. Put it in the comments below. And of course, if you do have any questions, also put those in the comments because I'm always happy to discuss these things. Always. I love talking Disney Cruise Line. I love talking all things vacation, family and travel, you know, all that stuff. I love it. And one more thing before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as we do monthly giveaways. This is something you're going to want to get on, okay? Because we love giving stuff away. We love giving back to you guys. Castaway Key is Disney's private island. Now, technically, it's not their island. They actually leased it. Back in 1997, they leased this island for 99 years. <laughs> That's a long time. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Disney's private island. They're the only ones on there. They built it to be like this tropical paradise. You get off the ship and you can go to different beaches. There's a few different beaches you can partake in. There's an adults-only beach called Serenity Bay, but there's all kinds of activities to do all throughout the island. It's a really, really fun and well set up place to go help you relax. So as I mentioned, there's different activities. Let's talk about some of those. One of my favorite things to do, I do have a couple of my favorite things to do. Uh, I'll just give you a couple examples. I love to snorkel there. I love it. You go out to the ocean. It's actually a pretty good area that you can snorkel in. It's all netted, so you're not going to get any large sea creatures. If you're afraid of sharks, you're not going to get that. But it's big. It's a lot of area. They have they had placed some things out in the ocean to help invigorate and respawn some coral in the area because Disney, believe it or not, they do care about the environment before they're allowed to build on these private islands. They have to do whole environmental research study. It's a big long thing that they have to go through and yeah, they do keep up on it. So they sunk a submarine, they got a ship down there, they got a bunch of artificial reef type areas where coral can once again grow. I love that about Disney. So I love the snorkeling. Another thing I really like is the biking. You can actually rent bikes and go biking around this island. I, you know, you wouldn't think that that would be so much fun, but it is. It really is. It's calming. It's relaxing to just pedal along these palm tree paveways. And uh, it's just so much fun. It really is. It's so relaxing. Along with the different activities to do, there's areas that are specifically designated for adults and children, and yes, teens as well. So there's this, there's Skittles Cove, there's Serenity Bay, there's a place where the teens can go hide out and hang out all by themselves without their parents. It's really, really well thought out. It really is. And there's places where the family can have fun together. The different beaches where you can either go snorkeling or go down some water slide or go on uh, one of the excursions and go parasailing or fishing or whatever you want to do. They have it. Now, I will say this when it comes to the excursions, you got to be careful with that. Don't get your hopes up too high because there's a lot of times that the winds will actually cancel a lot of those excursions, especially the parasailing, uh, the jet skis, the fishing excursions. Those can get knocked off the list for that itinerary for that day. So just be just be aware of that when you're scheduling an excursion for Castaway Key. These things happen and they do happen often. <laughs> Occasionally, though, you'll be pulling up to Castaway Key, and all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself pulling away from Castaway Key without even getting off. Why? Well, the dock, the man-made pier that they built there, is actually kind of tricky to get into, and they didn't really have any other way around it. The conditions have to be well enough, meaning the sea and everything, wind, all that has to be within parameters for them to be able to dock. They have a couple sets of parameters now. If it's under a certain set, they're going to allow to attempt it. If it's above that, they're not even allowed to attempt it. So depending on how bad the winds are, how rough the seeds are, that is really going to play a role. So what happens, what do you do when you don't make it into Castaway Key? It's actually pretty simple. They turn it into a wonderful day at sea. Yes, another day at sea. And before I went on Disney Cruise Line, I was a little like, oh, this day at sea, I want to go to those ports. But no, nah, not with Disney Cruise Line. I love their day at sea because they are so well thought out 
And even though it's a backup plan for Kasuiki, it's not because they have everything planned out at the same time. They are able to launch these shows, launch these entertainment into these gaps that would have been filled by Kasuiki that's no longer there. And it's just oh, so good. And that's why I cruise Disney. Honestly, it is because everything is so well thought out. So yeah, that's Castaway Key in a nutshell, guys. There's tons to do, and I'm gonna make a video on my top five favorite things to do while I'm at Castaway Key, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, that's about it for today, though. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is Castaway Key a place that you like to go, or if you do cruise Disney, is it a place you like to stay on the ship for or get off? I would just really love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and remember, adventure is out there.